And you had a follow-up, Senator yeah, Patterson. The uh, Minister had an answer to the question you took on notice earlier about the Minister for Home Affairs personal vehicle. Yep. Uh, I have received some advice from the Minister's office. Let me just pull it up for you. Um, immediately on being, on being appointed to this portfolio, Minister Burke informed his department and security agencies that he had a Chinese-made vehicle. He was given advice on the appropriate precautions to take and has taken those precautions. Okay, that um, invites some follow-up questions, Chair. I'm sorry, I was really to move on to outcome two, but I think we have to persist with this for a moment. What vehicle does the Minister drive? I'd have to take that on notice. I don't have those details. What mitigations has the Minister taken to protect himself and the Commonwealth from the security risks of driving a Chinese-made EV? Again, I'll take that on notice, but repeat the point that he has taken the precautions that he was advised to take by his department and security agencies. Does that include not plugging his phone uh, into the vehicle? Again, I, that, that level of detail I'd need to take on notice. Does that include not driving the vehicle to any sensitive uh, locations? I'll take that on notice. Uh, we just heard from Mr Hansford earlier the large number of national security and cyber security risks posed by these vehicles, including that they can listen to the occupants, that they can film people outside the vehicle where the vehicle is travelling, that it can track where the vehicle is travelling, that it's a risk to a mobile phone that is plugged into the vehicle. Is it really appropriate for the Ministers of Home Affairs and Cyber Security to be driving a Chinese-made connected electric vehicle? Well, again, um, immediately on being appointed to this role, the Minister sought advice from his department and security agencies and he has taken the precautions that he was advised to take. So but I guess what that would mean is that subject to taking those precautions, the security agencies in the department had no other concerns. Mm, okay. Um, well, I'd rather hear that from them than from you. Um, but just to be clear, our closest national security partner and ally, the United States, regards the national security threat posed by these vehicles as so grave they've effectively banned or proposed to effectively ban the importation of these vehicles into the United States for use by anyone, let alone a minister in a national security portfolio, are there seriously mitigations that can remove this risk? Well, it would seem, according to security agencies, the answer is yes. Right. And, and what's the basis of your confidence that that risk can be eliminated? If, our, if the, our American friends think that the only way to deal with this problem is to effectively ban them from the whole country, how does the Minister for Cybersecurity driving around in a Chinese listening device uh, protect Australians? Well, perhaps you don't share this view, Senator, but I have confidence in our security agencies uh, and the advice that they provide to ministers. The, the dominant provider and manufacturer of these vehicles is China, and they regard the threat so serious that they have banned these vehicles that they themselves make from sensitive national security sites. No one would know more about these vehicles than China, and they regard it as such a national security threat that it shouldn't be allowed near sensitive sites. Well, um, again, this may be a curious position for us to take, Senator, but we take advice from Australian security agencies, not from Chinese security agencies. Or from American security agencies, apparently. So you, it's your evidence, then, that our national security agencies don't agree with their American counterparts about the national security risk. I haven't said vehicles. that. What I've said repeatedly is that <coughs> Minister Burke took advice from his department and Australian security agencies and has acted in, in accordance with that advice. And I think that's the appropriate action for any Australian minister to take, not Would to go to overseas countries looking for advice from them, but to seek advice from Australian departments and Australian security agencies. Wouldn't the most prudent course of action be to put it beyond doubt and just not drive a Chinese-made connected vehicle? I think the most prudent thing for Australian ministers to do on national security matters is to rely on the advice of Australian security agencies, and that, that's what Minister Burke I'm sure they, has done. I'm sure they'd be glad that the ministers followed their advice, but I'd, I'd be willing to bet they'd be even more comfortable if they knew the minister wasn't driving one at all. Well, I'm, I, I'm not aware of them having advised him to not drive that car. No, no, well, you weren't aware at all until a few minutes ago no. at all about well, him driving I've, this I've told you, I've told you that... Minister Burke sought advice from his department and security agencies. He's acted in accordance with that advice. I can only assume that if, they, if their advice had been to stop using that car, then they would have provided that advice and he would have uh, acted in accordance with that. Prior to taking up this portfolio, the Minister was still a member of Cabinet and as a result of that, privy to a whole range of confidential and classified information. 
Why didn't he seek advice as a member of the Cabinet prior to taking up this portfolio about any mitigations? Why didn't he put these mitigations well, in place before then? You're, you're asserting that he didn't, and I don't know if that's the case. What I, what I did was request an answer to the question you posed earlier, which was related to his vehicle use while he was a minister in this portfolio. And as you yourself have said, when he was appointed to this portfolio, he sought the advice mm. of national security agencies. Mm. I think it's pretty clearly implied with that that he had not sought their advice prior to that, when he was just an ordinary I'm, I'm member not, of the Cabinet. I'm not sure about that. I haven't checked that. OK, well, can you take that on sure. notice? Um, how many other members of the <coughs> Albanese Cabinet are driving Chinese-made EVs? I'd, I'd have to take that on notice and I'd question whether this is even the portfolio to ask that question. Well, uh, you'd be pleased to know it is because the Department of Home Affairs recently became responsible for tracking Australian government exposure across the board uh, to connected technologies like these. Uh, the point I'm making is that the government fleet is um, owned by, serviced by, whatever the correct word would be, by a different department and they would be mm -hmm. the department that would have the sorts of records that you're seeking about the make and model of every minister's vehicle. 